Okay, everyone. Um, good afternoon to you all, and you're very welcome to this presentation on the ME in Civil Engineering at NUI Galway. Uh, my name is Brian McCabe. I'm a senior lecturer in Civil Engineering and uh, program director for the ME in Civil Engineering. Just to let you know at the outset that this presentation has been recorded, and uh, my understanding is that the marketing office will have some information on attendees and will make the presentation available um, at a later at a later stage. My plan is just to give a short presentation and then um, you'll have the opportunity to ask questions either to open your your mic and ask them directly or to just use the, the raise your hand function uh, or sorry to use the, the chat function um, in Microsoft Teams. <clears throat> So just to start off a little bit um, with the history or the context of the ME in civil engineering. Um, about 10 years ago or more, um, in an effort to align practice in Ireland with practice across Europe, uh, Engineers Ireland were keen to introduce um, master's level as the educational standard for chartered status. So up until 2013, um, if you had your level eight BE in, in, in any engineering program, and then if you had a minimum of four years, what they call responsible experience, then you could apply to become a chartered engineer. And the benefits of becoming a chartered engineer are, I suppose, you're in a position to sign off on reports, um, you have more responsibility, and as a result, some more pay. So then since 2013, the educational requirement became the ME, which is a level nine degree plus four years or more responsible experience. So in response to that, um, at NUI Galway, we introduced a new ME in civil engineering, uh, which was 60 credits in waiting, which is equivalent to the waiting of each of the four years in the BE, um, with a view to meeting the educational requirements prescribed by Engineers Ireland for CNG MIEI. So essentially it was a, a four plus one structure. So the bachelor's degree as it already was, plus an add-on one year. So then two years after in 2015, <clears throat> we put this new program forward for accreditation um, by Engineers Ireland and it was accredited. Um, and I should say that accreditation by en Engineers Ireland means that the program is recognised internationally under an agreement called the Washington Accord. And at the moment, there are 21 countries signed up to this accord and seven in waiting. So it means that the qualification from NUI Galway is recognised in all of those countries. Uh, in 2018, we went forward for accreditation again. We didn't actually have to because accreditation normally lasts for about five years. Um, but we wanted to put the BE, the four-year degree, and the ME together as a unit, a unit for accreditation. And again, that was successful. And since 2018, I guess we have moved towards what we are now referring to as an integrated ME. So rather than thinking in, in the old terms of doing your, your four-year BE and then thinking about whether you'd like to do the, the one-year add-on ME or not, we'd like students to think of the program as a five-year a five-year integrated ME um, with the option to drop out a year early with a BE. Um, so to that end, nowadays, our, our third years actually decide which stream to follow, whether they follow the ME stream or the BE stream. And the choice that they make um, at the start of third year dictates which program they follow, they follow afterwards. So I guess this is, this is something that students start thinking about in, in, in second year. And again, I guess for students who are not BE graduates of NUI Galway, or I suppose what I mean by that, they haven't started their degree programs in NUI Galway, um, they're also uh, eligible to, to join the program for the, for the ME year. Um, and in that bracket, we, we get a lot of students from other institutions within Ireland. Um, and there are probably some of you on the call 
but we also get international students, both EU and, and non-EU students in that category. So we also welcome those. So just some of the basic information <clears throat> for the 2021-22 academic year. Uh, the minimum entry requirement is a 2-2 in uh, a civil engineering degree. Now I have equivalent there, um, but generally we're talking about a mainstream civil engineering degree and level eight as defined by Engineers Ireland. The application process is through what's called CRM recruit. So I've given the actual link to the application process there. So when you get this presentation back um, or the recording back, you'll be able to, to um, have a look at the application process. I should say that for our own graduates, because we already know those students and we have access to their marked transcripts, the application process is, is very straightforward. A little bit more involved for students outside the university. Um, and the deadline for applications is generally late August for an early September start um, for Irish students, but for international students where there may be visa issues, the, the recommendation is obviously that they apply uh, well in advance of that and probably ideally in advance of Easter. So in, in this case, Easter 2021. The term dates for the next academic year are provisionally starting on the 6th of September and running to the 26th of November with uh, exams in December as shown and then semester two starting on the 10th of January until the 1st of April with exams from the 19th of April until the 6th of May. Now I guess uh, in the current academic year both semester one and semester two were delayed on foot of Covid so and hopefully that won't arise again in the next academic year but um, I guess we have to be prepared for some flexibility in that regard. The fees are competitive, we believe, for EU students, so €5,650, and that includes registration fee, so that's an all-in fee. Um, and I should add that for st any student from any institution within the EU that gets a first-class honours degree in a Level 8 programme, um, then they are entitled to a €1,500 Euro scholarship, so it reduces that to just over €4,000. Um, I should say that that's uh, automatic in the sense that you will get it if you apply for it, but you do need to apply for it and there's a deadline um, sometime in August. Uh, again, I, again, as mentioned, I don't think there are any non-EU people on the on this particular call. I'm just having a quick glance at, at names, um, but uh, the fees for non-EU students are, are a lot higher at 23,750 for the year. So you can see that it's, it's effectively a nine month um, academic year. So in keeping with, you know, years one to four that um, at, at undergraduate level. So what might you expect compared to a bachelor's degree? Um, so a few items just to, to uh, draw your attention to. Higher academic standard, but I guess that's nothing new in that second year builds on first year, third year builds on second year, fourth year builds on third year, and so on. Um, I guess the next two points are the key ones. So more independent learning. Um, generally at undergraduate level, what you need to know is prescribed to you in a lot of detail. Whereas at master's level, there is a lot more reading and kind of person research to do outside of lectures. Um, which is more akin to what you would have to do in the real world. You know, you will encounter engineering problems that you won't know much about and you will have to do some, some research. And the next bullet point, I guess, is linked. The problems are less well defined. So, you know, sometimes a client might come to an engineering consultancy with a brief and he or she may not know in a lot of detail what they want at the outset. So, you know, the engineers as part of a team will need to tease out what the brief will be and gradually over time the detail will be filled in. So the problems that you will be assigned on the uh, ME uh, will be akin to, to real world, world scenarios. 
And there's one particular module called the Integrated Design Project, which is a very good example of this, which I'll, I'll come back to again. And again, I suppose for our own NUI Galway students, they'll be familiar with this, as will many other students from around Ireland. But the, we use the European Credit Transfer System, ECTS, and one ECTS is nominally equivalent to between 20 and 25 hours total effort. So total effort would include attending lectures and labs and carrying out coursework in addition to your own independent study. Um, and modules are typically either five or 10 credits. The majority are five. So in those cases, you're talking about between 120 and 125 hours total effort over maybe a 15 week period. The structure of the program, <clears throat> the 60 credit program, um, 20 credits of the program goes towards a research project or just dissertation. And um, for any of you that are in the in the fourth year of a bachelor's program, you may well have a research project, but it's unlikely to have a one third waiting. So Engineers Ireland put a lot of value on research as a distinguishing feature of a master's compared to a bachelor's. So our research project is, is 20 credits. Um, there's a list of titles circulated at the start of, of semester one. And you can choose from one of those, but you're also free to suggest your own topic. And if, if your supervisor feels there's scope in it for, for a research topic, then uh, you can proceed on that basis. Um, and again, we've got a total of 13 staff in civil engineering, so that it covers all the different areas such as you know, environmental engineering, um, geotechnics, structures, transport and so hydraulics and so on. A lot of the ME projects actually run alongside PhD projects, so um, they generally are on pretty, pretty relevant research topics. An aspiration of the research project, although it's not a requirement, is to at the end produce a short paper of conference standards. And one that we sometimes aim for is um, an Irish conference, a biennial conference that takes place every two years called CERI, Civil Engineering Research in Ireland. And the next edition of that would be in, in 2022. So if some of you um, join RME in the next academic year, you know, you may be in a position to submit something to that conference. The <clears throat> next grouping of subjects is what Engineers Ireland refer to as advanced subject specific. In our case, they're obviously civil engineering modules. And here we have a civil stream and we have a water stream. Now, before I talk about those in, in, in detail, I should say that there is a requirement for your research project to align with whichever stream you choose. So if you choose a civil stream project or the civil stream, your project should be in the civil stream and likewise for the water stream. And I'll go through the individual subject options in a minute. Um, an important point to make again is that there are slightly different versions of the program for our own NUI Galway graduates um, and we'd say BE graduates from other institutions, be they elsewhere in Ireland or international. And um, again, I'll talk you through that in, in a minute. And then in keeping with original Engineers Ireland requirements, we have 10 credits of what they call transferable skills. So effectively, they're for the most part non-engineering modules um, because, you know, a lot of companies like their engineers to kind of accelerate into positions of leadership or management or have you know some business background and um, so we offer a list of modules which um, meet those requirements um, and we have a, a quite a long list that you can choose from which i'll show you in a minute <clears throat> so here's the civil stream again made up of 30 credits so within that 30 credits bracket, there's um, a compulsory section of 20 credits 
um, of the, the, the three modules in that grouping are advanced structures, computational methods and civil engineering. Computational methods is a module whereby you would learn about the basis of a lot of software that's used in industry like finite element software or finite different software. So when you have very complex problems, and again, I'm a geotechnical engineer, so an example I can give you would be in London, if you have deep foundations for a building, and then, you know, 30 meters below the base of those foundations, you have a, a tunnel for the London Underground. And then if you want to try and squeeze another tunnel between the bottom of the foundations and the lower tunnel, that's obviously a very complex problem. And you use computer software for, for those kind of problems uh, and they fall upon computational methods. So you'll get a good grounding on that in that module. We also have one called integrated civil engineering design, which runs over the whole year. And again, in that particular project, you, you work in groups of four um, and at the outset, you get a very scant brief and you've got to work through various aspects such as environmental impact assessment, ethics, um, scheme design, and then more detailed design, which may include geotechnical aspects, structural aspects, hydraulics, environmental, and so on. So it's, um, it's one of the aspects of the program that was commended by our last accreditation panel. And then there are some options. So the first five options there um, are for our own NUI Galway graduates. So you choose any two of those five. And for civil engineering graduates from outside, we allow a little more leeway. So we allow them to take one of the red modules. They're actually our fourth year modules. And it's standard practice internationally to allow some students from outside to take one module at graduate level or with, with undergraduate level with the view to just giving them the background th they need. Water stream has a similar structure. So um, the compulsory modules are made up of um, applied field hydrogeology and hydraulic modeling. And again, we have the integrated civil engineering design project. And generally we work um, with with the with the civil stream students on that. Again, we have an optional set and the optional set is is different. NUI Gawa graduates pick two from five. And then other graduates are allowed a little bit more flexibility on that front. And then finally, here's our list of transferable skills from which you have to pick two. So you can see that there's a big variety, advanced finite element methods. So if, if the computational methods module in semester one is of interest, then you can delve more deeply into it and become an expert in the area. Um, project management, uh, there are three modules there in IT. If somebody has an interest in that particular area, there's earth observation and remote sensing, planning and law, uh, technology, innovation and entrepreneurship. Um, Materials 2 is a module. It's actually a mechanical engineering module, but it covers other materials uh, different to the, the civil engineering ones that we're used to, such as timber and concrete and steel. It covers polymers, um, which again, you may you may encounter. Um, business strategy, which would be a module geared at somebody potentially interested in setting up a business. And then for people who, who have uh, an interest in, in mathematical modeling, there's two applied maths modules. And you just have to pick any two from that list. Just getting back to the integrated design projects, th these are the projects that run over the entire year and student works in group work in groups. And here are some just examples of them. Um, we, for example, a few years ago, we had uh, students design a stadium intended for the Rugby World Cup in 2023, but based at West Side um, pitch in Galway. So a notional site. Um, but as part of that, we brought the students on a visit to the Tolman Park, as you can see there in the image. And we had a meeting with the lead designer for the Tolman Park project and got some insight 
as to the key uh, design features of a stadium like that. Um, another project was the design of a bridge spanning the River Curb, and again, that was part of the um, proposal for the Galway City Ring Road, which, which may or may not go ahead, but students designed a bridge to span the curb and uh, a junction between the Ring Road and the, the N59 Galway Clifton Road. Um, another was the design of a, an international airport uh, serving Galway City near Ornmore. A more recent one was to redevelop uh, an area close to Galway City Centre, a st historic area called Nuns Island, where there's some residences, but also a lot of old industrial sites, which, you know, for which there's potential for redevelopment. 10 storey hotel in Galway docks. And then uh, this year's project is and the, the design of a new sewage treatment plant for the east side of Galway City. So at the outset of this project, there's very little information given and, and it can be a bit frustrating for students. But by the end of it, they generally acclaim this as one of the, the best learning experiences on the programme. So they get some tailored lectures from staff, but also some lectures from, um, from uh, I suppose, industry partners. And I've just shown two there, for example, Arup consultants have given um, lectures on a number of uh, projects, including the, the Goway City Ring Road one and uh, Ward and Burke Construction, a contractor based in Kilcolgan, um, but, but with offices in the UK and the USA and Canada, they have given us a lot of support on the, the sewage treatment plant design. So they're just some typical examples. And typical examples of ME projects, Here's an example of one. So in the on the left hand side, you can see what is a, a tidal turbine blade. And it's in this particular project, it was load tested. And the load test um, was, I think, over one mega newton, the equivalent of, of 10 double decker buses, as you, as you can see in the schematic on the right hand side, um, which is actually the highest load that's ever been applied in the world to a tidal turbine blade. So again, this is actually sponsored PhD research and there are PhD students and postdocs working on this, but um, the ME students can, can look at a, a, sub, a subset of work um, in parallel with this. Um, and here are a couple of more examples. Um, one is a particular building on the NUI Galway campus called Oris de Bruin. And um, one project was an energy stroke carbon project where they look, looked at a particular building that was inefficient in both regards and did a, a retrofit analysis of, of that building. And then another example would be um, nowadays micro tunneling or pipe, pipe jacking is used a lot for services and utilities underground rather than digging trenches and backfilling and causing a lot of disruption at ground, ground level. Um, shafts are sunk and tunnel boring machines can be launched uh, and they drag a series of pipes after them so they leave a kind of a, uh, a small tunnel in place through which services can can run and uh, one particular project involved the analysis of the data that's actually recorded by the tunnel boring machine and be recorded by by lubrication devices um, which is generally routinely gathered but never analyzed so this particular project analyze that and to see what, what learning could come from it. So just finally, um, <clears throat> here's some details if you want to make a note of them. Um, I'm the programme director, so I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. Um, there's my email address. And uh, now I'd be happy to take any questions you have, either by um, <clears throat> unmuting yourself and speaking directly or if you want to type something into the chat window, I'll, I'll see it and I can answer, answer directly.
Okay, has anyone any questions? I see a question from Paul. It's just uh, coming up on my screen now. Are there any part time or remote learning options available for the ME? Not at the moment, Paul. Um, I guess there are a few difficulties. Number one is that some of the modules on the ME are shared with other ME programs. So, for example, mechanical engineering and some of the transferable skills are shared with uh, programs outside of engineering. So it would be virtually impossible to schedule a timetable that would work for people in industry. So the, the idea of kind of bunching all lectures into Thursdays and Fridays or Mondays and Fridays, for instance, um, is quite difficult to do. Um, but it, it's obviously something that we are continuing to review. And if it's if we feel it's something that can be done down the line, um, we will we, we'll, so give it consideration. Um, as regards um, online, I guess probably the last year has been an eye opener for us all. We realise, you know, how how it, how possible it is to deliver programmes online. So I think that is something that we may look at in the coming years, um, maybe on a module by module basis, and allowing people over time to build up. Um, credits. But in terms of offering a full part time program over two years right now, um, I don't see that happening and I just don't think there is the market for it in the west of Ireland. There may be a market for it in Dublin, but but I don't think there is here. Are there any other questions? Let me just one final point to say is that, um, you know, our ME has been in place now for seven or eight years, and over the first few years, it was new to employers as well. But I guess at this stage, employers now have a preference for people with ME degrees because when they take these graduates on, they can accelerate them to positions of management or leadership. Whereas somebody with a B degree um, may after a few years decide to leave and come back and do the ME. And when they finish the ME, they're unlikely to go back to the same company. So it might be disruptive for the company from that regard. So there is an increasing uh, desire from companies for ME graduates. Although because the programme is relatively new and particularly in civil engineering, we've had a, a relatively low throughput of graduates in, 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 the, in the last few years. Um, we're only still recovering from the last recession. The numbers of graduates out there are relatively small, but we're hoping that that, that will improve in, in the next few years. OK, well, if there are no final questions, um, we we'll leave it there and thank you all for attending. And if you have any questions, you're very welcome to email me. And again, I just go back to the last slide with my email address and um, hopefully we'll see some of you on the programme in either next September or at some point in the future. OK, thank you very much. <laughs>